What's up, everybody? We got Monday Night Football between the Bengals and the Jaguars, and I have three NFL player props for you guys to lock in for this game. Two of my NFL player props are of the plus money banger variety, while one, we have an under, just a strict mainline play. Before we get into tomorrow's plays, I do need to do a recap from today, NFL Sunday. Brutal day. Not necessarily in terms of profit and loss, I went one in three on my four picks, slightly down 0.05 units. What's brutal is that I had George Kittle 70 plus receiving yards for plus 280 odds. He had 68 early in the third quarter, thought that one was easily going to cash for us. Did not see a single target for the rest of the game. Slight amount of pain, which is why I wrote that on the graphic here. If we had gotten Kittle to cash, we would have had an awesome day up over three units but we unfortunately did not. So we have to move on, just track the wins and losses. That does make it another brutal bad beat as we had Dak 300 plus on Thursday and he had 299. These things happen, unfortunately. We'll have to move on, hopefully cashing all three of these plays. Luckily, we are squarely in the green on the entire season up over 21 units of profit on the entire year with an ROI over 16%. So very much, very much in the green overall on these player props. But hopefully we can continue our winning ways for Monday's slate. As I mentioned, I got three for you guys to lock in. Real quick, if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And let's get into it. Play number one, Evan Ingram over four and a half receptions. This is at plus 110 odds at BetMGM. I'm also locking in Evan Ingram anytime touchdown, plus 290 odds at FanDuel. I'm combining these into the same write-up, same description. I'm combining them together. But these are my two plays. Um, overall, I'm, obviously, as you can tell, I'm expecting Evan Ingram to have a good game for Monday Night Football. Now, I struggled to debate between his receptions and yards, but we honestly ended up getting better value on the receptions from an odds, from a pricing perspective. So that's why I decided to go there. And Ingram in general, just we want to get into the analysis here, not quite having as good of a year as he did last year when he kind of burst onto the scene after being a first round pick for the Giants. Everybody thought his career was over. Had a great year for the Jaguars last year. He's quietly still been pretty good this year, just isn't having quite the same blow-up games that he had last year. But strictly from a reception perspective, he has cashed five or more receptions in eight of 11 games so far this year. In all three games that he missed, he had exactly four receptions. So obviously he has been consistently hovering around this number. And the reason why we're targeting him in Monday Night Football is because of the juicy matchup against the Bengals. The Bengals are one of the worst defenses in the entire NFL, specifically at guarding the tight end. Last week, they gave up nine receptions and 120 yards to Pat Fryermuth, who had legitimately done nothing up until that point. He basically doubled his receiving yards in one game against the Bengals. The game prior to that, Dalton Schultz had 71 receiving yards. The game prior to that, they gave up 10 receptions and 81 yards to Kincaid. Prior to that, they gave up nine receptions for 149 yards to George Kittle. So yes, the Bengals are not good guarding the tight end. That's for the receptions. The anytime touchdown, I will admit, is a little bit scarier. Ingram literally hasn't scored a touchdown this entire season. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm calling my shot that his touchdown drought is going to come to an end in this game. As I mentioned uh, pre previously, the tight ends just torch the Bengals. That's not only from a yards and receptions perspective, it's from a touchdown perspective as well. So I'm looking for Evan Ingram to have a great game in this one. If you wanted to take his yards, you could at 45 and a half. I, I think that's going to go over if you just asked me. Now, we're obviously only going to track whether he hits his receptions, whether, gonna, whether he's going to hit his anytime touchdown, but I do like his yards as well. That's our first and second play. Next up, obviously in the same game here, Jamar Chase under 57 and a half receiving yards, minus 114 odds at Fandle. So this is our one under, our one non-plus money banger. But I really, really do like fading Jamar Chase in this game. So if you just look at strictly the yards, the, the first start that Jake Browning had last week, you, you'd looked at that and you'd say, he had Jamar Chase at 81 receiving yards. That's not bad for the guy's first start. That does not accurately portray just how brutal it was with Jake Browning at quarterback and how hopeless I believe it is. Yes, Jamar Chase did have 81 yards, but what you need to do is drill in 
to those yards. Jamar Chase had two pretty long receptions on kind of malarkey BS tipped balls that he just happened to kind of track down after the ball had already been tipped. It was not the design of the play. It was not the Bengals force feeding him targets because of how good he is. It was just a fluky tipped ball that Jamar Chase just happened to get under. That happened twice, and he got a majority of his yards just from that. It does not project the type of game that Jamar Chase actually had. He only had six targets, and he only had four receptions. Those are both among the lowest that he's had in the entire year in both of those categories. It is tied with the fewest amount of uh, targets, and it's the second fewest amount of receptions that he's had. Now in this game against the Jaguars, they're getting T. Higgins back. Yes, that does mean less coverage devoted to Jamar Chase, but that also means another target for Browning to struggle to throw to. And looking at the matchup, if you just look at raw stats, you would say the Jaguars, yes, they give up a lot of passing yards, but they do have a good passing defense. They're eighth in the NFL in terms of passing DVOA. So they do have a good passing defense, despite the fact that they do give up a lot of yards. So regardless, I'm not expecting Jake Browning to have a good game in this one. I'm not expecting the Bengals to have a good game either. Side note, I did put a unit on uh, Jaguars minus nine and a half. So I'm not going to track that, but if you want to know where I'm leaning, definitely the Jaguars in this one. But hopefully we can get these three player props to cash. If you are riding with me, make sure to comment and let me know. Other than that, remember to like, subscribe, all that good stuff helps me out a ton. Appreciate everybody for watching and have a good one.